I'm sure this is going to be really fun to see. Oh, and bans, by the way. Uh, we do have cams has banned Skellige. Nequis, on the other hand, has banned uh, Nilfgaard from cams. So cams not able to touch that double cross. And of course, as you can see, cams here is going on blue coin with Syndicate. Yeah, so starting off with Syndicate versus Nilfgaard. This is a matchup. Both these players will have lots of experience over a long period of time because these aren't, these aren't new decks, really. Uh, there's definitely some new things about it, like it's off the books and we've got um, some different cards like this Calve in, in Nilfgaard, but it's certainly still the core of the matchup is quite similar to what these guys will have played for many months beforehand. So um, looking for some really high level gameplay, looking to pick up some lines that I might try and use myself on Nadra as well, Celie, because these are not the kinds yeah. of decks that I tend to play too much. And I haven't Same. actually <laughs> seen any off the books yet either. No, this is really exciting seeing this whole thing in action. As you can see, Cam's there with his Saul as well. He has a little bit of engine power as well going on for himself here in this list. Uh, Nequis potentially having to answer that threat with an uh, with an invo, uh, which maybe not what you want to do. There are spenders that potentially can go tall. Um, yeah, let's see. Nilfgaard versus uh, off the books. How is it going to go? Nilfgaard typically loves the long round. What do you think is... Nikwi's potentially going to go for the long round situation here um, against off the books. What would that look like? Yeah, I th that's a really good question. I think like the first thing um, for Nilfgaard in a long round is you've got a lot of spies and things like that, which you can really disrupt. The key thing to look out for, I think, for Nikwi's in, in the round one to give us some insight on how he wants to play it is how he decides to use Jan Calvay. If he manage, if he holds onto it in round one and decides to play it in round two, he's you know confident that he's not going to get bled. Whereas if he plays it round one, he's just really feeling confident to apply a lot of pressure. For Cams as well, round one for Syndicate can often be quite a tricky one. Um, that's where it tends to struggle the most. So he started off with a nice Arena Ghoul, which is just a nice 7 for 4 and off the books. And there is the Calvate for Nequiz. So he's going to be drawing into all his golds now. Uh, meaning if Cams can apply a lot of pressure in round 2, for example, um, Nequiz could get bled out of a lot of his golds and be left with not enough for round 3. Yeah, I like the stall coming down here from Cams. Uh, adding pressure to that round 1 that you did mention, Syndicate is a little bit vulnerable too. So this stall is really going to help out pump some points on the board. Nequiz, of course, does have Invocation, but does he want to take it round one? Also, a lot of gold cards and an Illusionist there. Not something that you can play round one necessarily. So let's see how Nequiz's hand can hold up here and uh, if he, he can take it from Cams in round one. Yeah, it does look like Nequiz just playing it nice and slow. Happy for Cams to take the round lead. Already, Cams having played Saul is quite committal. A couple of poisons as well coming through there for Cams just to finish. Only up a two-point card, but he's not too worried about losing on even with this uh, with this Saul ticking. And for Nequiz, often this is the, the line I like to call the Red Rain line as Nilfgaard, where you just play <laughs> three and then pass. Uh, but of course, now it's a little bit different with the inclusion of Calvate. Uh, does make things like a little bit spooky that you might get bled from all your golds in round two. Uh, also, yeah. the mushy truffle inclusion. Um, if you play this card in round one, obviously you lose that potential carryover for round three, Sealy. Whereas if you play it in round two, you've still potentially got those those points in round three. Yeah, I agree. There's only so far Nikwiz can really go with this hand. And of course, like you mentioned, Nilfgaard is vulnerable to that round two bleed, especially after playing Calvite. I think if you manage to squeeze out your opponent's Artod or Brothens, that's a really, really big deal. So if it does come to Nikwiz defending that round two, he will definitely try to hold on to some point value. Like you said, the Truffle is also nice carryover if you play around two rather than round one. And there it is, the Red Rain line. It's just like, I feel, <laughs> feel like Red Rain really popularized this, this line with Nilfgaard, just <laughs> confidently playing three and then passing. You get to hold on to a lot of your good cards. And because you're so good in the long round three and you're confident in that long round three, it really forces your opponent to try and bleed you. And then you can just do some nice things to, to get ahead of them. But take it when you're just guaranteeing yourself drawing all of these gold cards, Celia. Look at that hand. Whew, that is nice. Uh, Cams is looking for cards to hopefully bleed with. There's still quite a bit in hand, but I do like the inclusion of the decree here from Cams. It means he doesn't have to rely on Bank to get the exact card he wants, and sometimes Bank lets you down, but decree really allows you to get exactly the card you want exactly when you need it. So um, I hope we can see that shine for Cams here. Nikwiz, on the other hand, is going to start defending this bleed. He has his trouble. He has his illusion. It's coming down on the board right now, aiming for that round three carryover. 
Yeah, and I think like for, it's only an arena ghoul, which obviously off the illusionist, like the second illusionist getting a seven point arena ghoul, you're very, very happy. But that first one, you would prefer something like a tax collector uh, or, or something like that. So Cam's having done a good job not to give any good illusionist targets at this point. And here comes the beggar. I love this card, Silly, one of my favorites. <laughs> Uh, whenever I'm playing Witcher 3 at the moment and going around Novigrad, I'm really hoping I get some of the beggar voice lines with it. Unfortunately, they are made just for Gwen because uh, they, yeah. they really are great. And wow, look at that. Cams is confident in this long round three. He believes like in this. the power of off the books. I like this. It, this is one that I was thinking about ahead of today's cast. I was really thinking about what does Nilfgaard versus Syndicate actually look like? Uh, Syndicate does have the advantage of being able to take care of... Um, Nilfgaard's assimilate engines so if you can control those assimilate engines down while also putting out points of your own you should be pretty happy but we know the Nikwi's here looking at a very gold and beautiful hand uh double blind maker there maybe not ideal for round three we'll see um but yeah how how is Cam's gonna do this defeat all of these golds in the third round I guess we will find out but those assimilate engines definitely have to go yeah, and it's this is something that's so powerful about Calvate as well. It's the hand for Nilfgaard, you know, is going to be flawless. You have the six points of mushy truffle carryover, but let's not forget the assimilate value that can give you as well. Um, whereas for Cams, he's got to just rely on drawing the cards that he, you know, his best possible hand. And obviously, two sea jackals. He's not playing jackpot, so he is more likely to have to play spenders. He's got um, a Morelsi. He's got Freak Show. Philippa, lots of spenders, and I do feel like he's missed a couple of key cards. Of course, King of Beggars still in the deck, uh, which is important. He hasn't bricked that. Um, it does have Royal yeah. Decree to play one of these cards, but there's there's no Savola. Professor, I think, is missing as well. Professor is a qu quite a quite a big one. Definitely can take care of an engine just by himself. So uh, we are missing a little bit here from Cams. Unfortunately, let's see if he can still uh, take care of those similar engines from NG. And, and how that will go down. But yeah, you don't really want to miss your cards in, in round three. I think both players are looking at their their hand being kind of a full potential hand. And I don't think Camps is necessarily looking at that, having missed Professor and Zavala. Yeah, and chat is pointing out here that actually Neku is mulliganed in uh, Invo. So not something you would typically see. Uh, I guess that's just because Nequiz is, is going to respect that Cams is likely to not go too tall with things like Jackals, having lots of spenders like Philippa in the deck as well. Um, and so for Nequiz, deciding that Invo is actually the worst card. Now, that's quite a statement to make. You know, you're, you're going to get be looking at 12 points minimum really on Invo on the Frightener from Savola. Um, so you're saying that 12 points is not what, what you're really looking for. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, that does allow Cams to potentially go a little bit taller on those um, Jackals if he starts to suspect there is no Invocation, but he still has to play around it existing in Anuquiz's hand. So it, definitely we do see a lot of spenders though from Cam, so he can kind of um, even those out. I think Syndicate in general can play quite well uh, without going too tall when they know there's a tall threat that they have to play around. Yeah, and also a key thing that Cams has to do in this round is playing around this Terra Nova. And this is why Double Cross is so popular with Terra Nova. It's very difficult to... You have to either play around the leader from Double Cross, where obviously they see three of your cards, or play around these Mage Torturers. And it's pretty much impossible to do both of those, you know? Like, you have to either play your card or hold it in your hand. So then if you give Terra Nova less value, the leader's going to get more. And here comes the Freak Show cleaning up a couple of engines. Um, decides not to spend any further, obviously, with an abundance of spenders in hand. But Nequiz does just want to get rid of that. And this is one of the beautiful things about Muzzle, being able to just answer this freak show as well. Yeah, and one thing about playing off the books is you can't boost that um, freak show necessarily outside of Muzzle range. Uh, while with Jackpot, that would be possible. So that's a bit of a bummer. It's the most uh, efficient engine for camps to take out those assimilate engines. But he has to hope he did enough with freak show before it got yoinked and now is Nikwiz's uh freak show yes yeah, so a five point game at the moment of course there's leader available for both players there's also a mushy truffle down on the board but the the quality of the hand at first glance you'd have to give to Nikwiz, you know um and that's just because of the power of yan calvate drawing it in that opening hand um and just making sure all these draws are very nice indeed the coup de gras at the moment isn't looking fantastic you could use it on kurt of course uh, to purify this freak show to give yourself a spender <laughs> uh, you could also just coup the jackal to give yourself a spender 
Um, or maybe try and find something like, you know, you could coup Philippa as well. That's something else that Cams has to be very careful of. Yeah, the coup is definitely looking pretty nice still here. I mean, uh, Nikui's sitting there on six coins right now in the bank, so he definitely has them. Uh, and Freak Show is very usable, so he can wait a bit of a flexible uh, time. But we do use a couple of coins there by going for the uh, mage, um, mage assassin here. No, wait, what's his name? <laughs> There's so many mages in this game now. There's so many mages, isn't there? There's <laughs> the mage assassin, the mage torturer, and this is the salamander mage. The salamander mage, mage. yes. yes. <laughs> it came to me now. Yeah, and there comes the Philippa stealing back the salamander mage, which has a powerful synergy with tributes, which obviously are off the books. Uh, there's going to be a lot of a lot of those. Uh, Nequis coin count right now at four. So while he can coup Philippa, he's not able to uh, steal the salamander mages back just yet. Not yet, we'll see. He can leave that coup for really maximizing the points on it later. And I believe we're now looking at a bribery here. Uh, I see some Mareels here. It's a solid eight point play if you want to go for it. Never mind, it was a leader coming down, not bribery. And um, there we go. Mareels coming down. Not a bad pull. I mean, Decree would have been pretty nice as well, potentially. But um, yeah. Yeah, I think this is where Kams has done really well, just nullifying that um, double cross ability. He had to play into Terra Nova a little bit, but there's no, as I say, you're kind of forked. You don't have a perfect way out. You're either giving Terra Nova a lot of value or the leader. Um, and Kams has done a good job of, of making this leader really be quite lackluster. But at the same time, that does mean that his hand is also quite lackluster. So. And Furgort here has been doing a lot of work as well. You can see all of those fine targets on the board. Um, yeah, he's definitely doing his job right. And our Todd has a lot of cards to choose from here. Not a bad situation for Nikwiz. Also, that truffle value is still waiting there. But, of course, we do have the big, big, big point swing that uh, potentially is Savala and, and King of Beggars coming out from the deck as well. So Cams does have a few points up his sleeve still. Yeah, we've got an option of a few different Skellige... Uh, I keep getting the faction names wrong. Skellige, <laughs> Syndicate, Nilfgaard. I'm all over the place with the faction names. We've got Eavesdrop, Shakedown, uh, off Lydia. Or this... I can't remember Bullet what this other one's called. Goes for the Shakedown. <laughs> nice little profit. Obviously triggering the Assimilate as well. Um, and there's still the Marshy Truffle down on the board, which is going to be playing for not just the six points, but also the Assimilate on uh, Brathens, Mage Torture, as well as the Terra Nova as well. All right, and here comes some a leader charges down as well from Cams as he's going to decide on what to do here with the Marils. And there goes the Brothens. It's a seven point game at the moment. Four coins available to Nequiz with also the truffle down on the board. For Cams though, nine coins in the bank, three coins, uh, well, three leader charges as well as this Raw Decree and the Sea Jackal. Uh, he's gonna still be, you know, working out exactly what the cards are because there's an invo remember that Nequiz hasn't played and as soon as he sees this coup he's gonna surely know that Terra Nova is the last card and he doesn't have to play around invo so it'll be interesting to see how he, how he plays it he might be regretting this second sea jackal in hand now at this point so it does seem like some really good mulligans here from Nequiz the 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 invo mulligan seemed a little bit suspect but it was only going to play for nine points um, and it would have had to hold on to it right till the end as well. So maybe wouldn't have made his sequencing ideal. Let's see here. Now the Terranova as well is going to show up. We have a multitude of choices. Not many coins left there for Nikwiz to utilize. It's just going to have to come down on uh, whatever will be the most points right now. Yeah, so and to be fair, there's not that much. Siggy Reuven's not going to be a whole bunch. There's no beggar on his side of the board, though. So he's not going to go for the beggar, unfortunately. He actually goes for the Philippa just to spend these two coins. Philippa, of course, the most efficient spender, really. Um, oh, I think there was a bug there because there's a four coin, yeah, a was... four point uh, curse has been seized instead. Yeah. Here the comes Savola. Showed up interestingly. All right, here is the grand finale of Kamsa's play. Let's see, is this going to be enough points? We do have leader charges left still. As you can see, these jackals are pumping out the points, and it is a very, very close one, but not quite enough here for Kams. 
Yeah, a three-point game there for Cams. Obviously, was able to spend with these Sea Jackals to get that Horde value, but he was probably just a gold away. And I think really yeah. Calvate is the star of the show in this Taking one. Taking it and the Quees with his consistency was really shining. All right, jumping into the next one. The coins are flipped. Yeah, and here we are. Let's go. We've got Cams with his Ursine Ritual. Uh, self damage, self wound deck versus Nequiz alumni with his defender, his necromancy. It's going to be an exciting one. Double Mardrome available for Cams. <laughs> uh, Sigfold available there too. And uh, yeah, I'm I think really I think chats. I was going to say chats in really good hands here, especially of course no stranger to Sigfold. So I think yeah. <laughs> we'll get some really good insight for this this self wound gameplay that we're about to see. Yeah, so Sigfold is a card that recently got printed or. Well, it's always been in the game. It was one of those cards very similar to Nithral, where it was dealing two damage um, if it had Berserk 3, I, I want to say, which meant it was very vulnerable. You'd have to have it at three power for, for it to be doing much. Now it's really working with the self win, but look at the confidence of this 12-point Leticia. Of course, open deck lists. You know there's no threat of a heat wave. Otherwise, I don't think you'd be doing this on Ladder Seely. No, see, that's the thing with having Defender. It does delay things by a turn. So if you know what you're doing, then you can just put that Lotisha on board before you go and protect her, have her ticking all the time for your uh, students to come down later. Yeah, and Cam's here really being rewarded by the raw decree that he plays in his deck because he's able to open with Defender and then get this Melusine down on the second turn. And getting Melusine access in round one is a really big deal in this self-wound deck because a lot of the time you want to res it in round two. It's going to be nice and tall. Uh, of course, the more carryover you get, the better that that play is going to be. The other thing to keep in mind as well is Ceres Fearless. She's going to be flying out of the deck once um, there's been nine instances of self damage so so far we've only seen one which is this melusine click if you're hitting armor it doesn't count and i also believe silly that bleeding doesn't count either so previously yeah. a big weakness of this card this serious fearless is that it would come out early but now with sigfold and defender with the armor and stuff it is more difficult and also this is the other thing about sigfold it's just eating up some random damage and this two points from the Vengeance that would usually be two points against it is now basically two points for it because this bleeding turns into points. Here's the Mardrobe. Oh, I'm so excited <laughs> to see Sigfold in action. I love this. It is really great. But look at Nikwisa's setup as well. He has things under control. Nothing can touch this Letitia behind that defender. She's chilling. She's setting up the famous alumni carryover. Well, like you said, Kams is doing the same with the Melusine. It's not bad at all. And with Kams' list, he can actually rest this Melusine uh, another two times. He has Sigdrig was right if he wants to. He also has Fakuzia on it later. So banking on it round one, really, really good stuff for Kams as well. And you're right, this signal is looking mighty fine and chonky sitting there uh, next to the Melusine, just chilling and there we go, another one. These Mardromes are like 12 <laughs> points on Sigfold because you're, you're damaging it by three and then boosting it by nine and the damage, the bleeding just turns into points a little bit later on. So uh, this is just brilliant to see. Uh, that's a big reason that we have seen actually Magpie playing a Sigfold in um, Battle Trance because you get the leader ability. Geddy as well giving you Mardrome. So it's such an interesting card. I don't think when it was first printed, we really thought it would have quite as big an impact as it's having, but Absolutely. It's, it's really yeah. great to see it supporting two different archetypes, really. And again, it's just such a fabulous read, I think, in this tournament and this qualifier is being like, hey, there's not that many heat waves. I can afford to go greedy. That's exactly what Kams is doing. Uh, this, this is a very greedy deck, but if nothing's going to... Uh, disrupt it that it's not and you're very very happy about it and Queen's also getting this round one thinning down definitely not bad having access to the farts getting those siege masters out as well uh, but from here on out it's getting a little bit more committal yeah and all the time though just developing more carryover leticia has now been clicked so the patience on the students is just continuing to grow of course cams just does have a pella to get through the defender but not really having any control there is a dora gray in his deck doesn't have access to that bride of the sea is able to play actually another mardrome which is going to be a whole lot more points um and that is exactly what cams is going for he doesn't unfortunately for him have the ac access to the canoe because that at right this moment in time would be dealing 16 i guess 15 damage after the bleeding per turn so that's like the big control tool that cams does have um, but really just trying to make sure he wins this round. And listen, both players developing, developing a bunch of carry over here. 
Yeah, you definitely have to do it as CAMS. Uh, you can't really let alumni get away with all of this carryover as well as round control. So as long as CAMS can stay in the game, he will definitely try to do so. Um, but yeah, of course, that skirm is not looking too delightful there in hand. There is no discard package uh, at the moment. Nothing to rest with Sigdrifus right either. So it's starting to look like CAMS cannot play much further into this round. The Peller can still come down, but after that, it's getting a little bit iffy. Yeah, just to let everyone know as well, we are watching through essentially the same feed as you. We don't have access to Observer, so we're going to have to try and keep our eyes on these students. I certainly haven't been counting. If I had, I probably would have counted wrong. So we'll just try and wait and see <laughs> exactly where they're at at the end of the round and try and keep track. But they're certainly very patient. But this is just fantastic from Cams. Managing to win on even against alumni is no easy feat. Ooh. The strength of alumni really is that it's able to develop carry of while also just applying a bunch of pressure and winning the round in round one with cards like Vengeance. But this Sigfold yeah. and Marjoram combo just absolutely carrying cams here while also developing a bunch of carry of on the Melusine too. And this was just such a good pass for Cams because his hand after that was like really, really, I don't think he could have played barely uh, at all further and you would have got something good at Nequis uh, still. So yeah, definitely Cams is a happy man, I think right now, not bad at all. And here we go, here comes the Melusine, developing even more uh, carrier probably for later uh, and just, just hoping to get that short, short round three where you can still Melusine. Yeah, Ceres Fiel is still in the deck as well at five. Again, this is something you would really see often that this Ceres would be accidentally, inadvertently thinned out in round one. But if you're damaging armor, also the Sigfob with the bleeding, it does just help to prolong her, keep her in the deck for longer. Uh, something to bear in mind as well that's going to be an option for Cams is using Restore on this Melusine. Uh, of course, doesn't have access to Restore right now, but can get it in his hand for round three. You could Canute onto this Melusine, um, and then, you know, Restore is going to play sort of similar to a Becker's, where it doubles basically it boosts it it resets it and then boosts it by double the damage reset so if you get the melusine nice and damaged uh, it can get really messy quite quickly and here does come canute onto the melusine are we going to see a couple of leader charges as well or just one leader charge would be needed on canute if you put him to five he gets to berserk and gets to reuse his order uh, his order cams is still holding on to that one thinking uh if he needs the Knut for a next turn or not, I think he has to assess the situation. What is Nequis going to play? When is he going to be happy with this bleed? I mean, you'd kind of want to see an alumni, I think, but I feel like Nequis is kind of good tools here to um, withstand this bleed a little bit while still keeping points for round three, but we shall see how it's going to go. Yeah, I like this decision from Cams not to use a leader charge because they do, even though you're losing a point, they do still have value on other cards in the deck. Um, and it does just make this Canute like a really easy removal target for something like a, an alumni or a student from the graveyard, perhaps. Um, here comes a veteran. Uh, Cams only has one veteran, interestingly, in his deck. And here comes the Fearless as well. Now, is this a misplay from Cams? I wonder, because often Fearless, you do want to get her down on the board when you can just click her order instantly. But really interestingly, he's got three or four different targets that uh, Nequis needs to kill. He needs to kill the Melusine, he needs to kill the Vet, the, the Ceres, and the Canute. So sort of four engines all on the board at the same time for Cams here. Um, I would not expect him to pass here with, with this board state. No, absolutely not. And yeah, Nequis kind of maybe missing out what he wanted there with the rune word as well, getting that melee student starting to take from zero and very slowly getting up there. Maybe there were better <laughs> things to find there potentially. But uh, yeah, here we go. We get an alumni out. I think Cams is quite uh, happy about that. And he just continues bleeding because like you said, the Ceres is still online. You have the Knut combo. And as you can see, the veteran just juggles the damage really nicely here. Uh, Cams realizes this is all online. So now he goes ahead and uh, does damage the Knut, protecting that Ceres just in case. But I mean, now it's kind of a nice Siltkirk potentially. Yeah, it's an interesting sort of group of plays there really from Cams where um, and also Selkirk goes for the Canute instead and Sarah is still on the board. It's something usually that would just be the card that you clean up first, but just Canute giving that extra um, thing to remove. I was kind of expecting here really Cams to replay his Melusine again, um, but decides to hold on to it. So he's still got that for round three. Playing a Pella now, yeah. just really trying to make some efficient trades. 
Yeah, if, if Cam smells blood in the water here, he might read that he can actually 2-0, then he would still go and rest the Melusine. However, I think he's just looking at uh, getting as much value out from Nikwiz as possible before leaving and taking that short round. Yeah, so Cam's, of course, winning round one on even, does just have this position where he's sort of controlling the length of round three. He can either try and get card advantage, um, but really being eight points down here at this point, um, he's just trying to get some more golds from Nikwiz and does decide to play his Skirmisher and is going to be hoping to see something like a Gerhardt, um, but is just going to see Practice Makes Perfect, which is only a four provision card, but it is still pretty good. Now, yeah. round three, I would imagine, we is now where we go. Nikwiz does have this chapter of Wizards, which is going to be staying on the board as well as one leader charge. Cam's three leader charges available, but both players have still a bunch of carryover developed from that round one. Yeah, there was still the possibility for Cam to kind of hope that Nikwiz would have had a really awful card there in hand and jam, jam some leader charges, play that uh, Melusine as well in round two, but decide to go for the round three. And here finally are Coral. She made it to the party, um, you know, Better late than never, right? Uh, unfortunately, Kams has been stuck with those <laughs> discards targets the whole game. And um, I believe still Burna there somewhere <laughs> somewhere in the deck. Yeah, opening up with this chapter of Wizards. Alumni being able to buff the other one, uh, which doesn't have the zeal. But here comes Dora Gray. Really nice value from the lock there. Uh, Margarita also available here. So it's really great to see these old school lock cards that have just been getting buffs over the last few years really uh, get back into play. These are two classic lock cards really for me. Uh, I've always had this comparison between Margarita and Dora Gray as well. Like which is better? Because Margarita's <laughs> worse against the red ships from Skellige, uh, but she of course has the lock. But Istrid as well, just getting these points uh, onto these uh, these cards. It's like a little bit more carryover. There's just so much carryover Ooh. now. Coral finding the Burna, this is definitely quite nice for Cam. There's not very many cards still left, but I do believe <laughs> Burna can still make some points. And I mean, a 21-point Melusine spotted there in the graveyard. So that's going to be a pretty big finisher for Cam's. Although Nikwiz, of course, still has a good amount of points here. He can sit on that Gerhard for a little bit, see what he can find. Um three options here will of the wisp or alzer's thunder or forbidden magic which one is it going to be he could have taken could have taken the thunder it was the same amount of points but yeah. i like that going for the for the style uh, i imagine there was looking <laughs> for the um the casting contest and finds the skirm as well um vilcol is just going to get mulligan uh, discarded i should say now the alumni comes down. Cams has this huge Faku uh, Fakusha Melusine combo. These three leader charges don't have a good target, big. though. It's big. Let's see. It's so close again, you guys. Uh, here it comes the Fakusia into the chunky Melusine, and the leader charges do have to be spent. But you do get the benefit of the token as well coming down. So taking it here is the cell phone Skellige list. I'm not gonna lie, I felt like this was gonna be a pretty tough matchup for NR from, uh, for sorry, SK from Redcoin, but Cavs pulled through. The Sigfold, it really does just make the difference and makes for some really entertaining gameplay uh, at, at the Absolutely. competitive stage. And very creative design as well. Uh, I think Sigfold really uh, sees, sees uh, I don't know, just a wonderful display of Sigvold action, I think, yeah. there in that game. So great to see. All right, we're heading on to the next game. This is a very, very tight race. Of course, blue coin means Cams is taking his alumni for a spin. And Nikwiz, on the other hand, is answering with Syndicate. This time, a more control heavy one with a lot of things to answer those alumni. What do you think? Is Cam's gonna stress a little bit here? We see Freak Show and uh, we see uh, Horse and Junior as well coming down. Can Cam's make this work in round one? I would be worried for Cam's because the key difference is he doesn't have that defender which just is an extra card. You're doing a skill check. Listen, Nikwiz has the curtain hand, so actually it doesn't really matter in this situation. But imagine in a world where like Nikwiz didn't have this curtain, this defender could just pose another problem. He also isn't playing Necromancy, which we saw Nikwiz play. The Morelsi comes through, cleans up nice and quickly, uh, already just applying a bunch of pressure because we know alumni struggles if its students get answered. Uh, Leticia, she's obviously kind of like a student. She has to be answered. Cams does have, though, some points on the board. The knickers being thinned as well for that <laughs> extra tempo in round one yes. is going to help, I think, here. 
the ultra consistent uh, northern realms goes goes to um, help Cavs a little bit here. But of course, as we saw, there is the freak show, of course. Uh, sorry, Horse and Junior, not freak show, the Junior one coming down, taking care of these alumni. That's a really efficient card for Syndicate to deal with these threats or um, alumni carry over more like student here in round one. They evolve into alumni a bit later. <laughs> but yeah, that is happening. And I think Dequees is pretty happy with the control tools he was able to find here. Um, Cavs, on the other hand, Let's see how he can make this around one work, but it's a little bit of a stressful situation indeed. Yeah, and you can just see why this Northern Realms deck is like, do you bring this Northern Realms deck? Like, okay, we know it's really good. It obviously got buffed with these Siege Masters, which makes it not only have more points, but also more consistency because you're drawing more cards. But also, like, there's going to be so many people that are just out to get you. And here comes the freak show. You can combine this with the horse and on the board as well to just clean that up using the insanity ability without even needing the full coins. And now Cams is 12 points down. He has no students left on the board and just decides to pass losing on even. Oh, that is a sad this, round one for Cam. It is a sad round one. And here we can see kind of the power of a deck that has enough control. They don't care about spending these important golds in round one. You can go ahead and jam them if you can get rid of those students in round one. Because now Cam's has not been able to develop that carryover for later. That will then be the payoff on his alumni and has to now deal with the, the situation of the syndicate smork coming in there. Nequi's just drawing really beautifully for that round as well. Yeah, and he just has so many answers and has that Devotion Skelliger. Uh, de there it is again! That's the fourth <laughs> time! Has that Devotion Syndicate with the addition of Horson uh, Jr., which is, of course, a great control tool. We saw its insanity ability come through as well. Kamz's pass, though, was quite nice. At least he did, n you know, nullify a lot of the Syndicate coin carryover that Nikwiz can get. Um, and, I mean, listen, we know that Kamz loves to jam his cards and Nikwiz quite happy to follow suit as well. This Clean is very fast phase. <laughs> cleaning up the student with a couple of poisons, just even more control tools and just continuing to mean that these alumni uh, are not developing the points that Kamz would like to see. No, not at all. And Kamz here, of course, does have the double Siege Master in hand, meaning those will both come out for a sweet bit of tempo, I think, for Kamz still. So um, let's see what he draws into two draws to be had here. Ooh. Yeah, there's the there power of the Siege Masters. You only need one Siege Tower at four provisions to pull both if you've got them both in hand. Vengeance as well being a card um, and just being able to cycle your deck. Uh, very nice. Also, the synergy with Istrid there. Uh, Istrid getting a point um, boosted on himself because the, the winch that was drawn boosts Istrid. But then uh, the alumni which was drawn also getting a point on it too. So Istrid synergy with the Siege Masters is also really cool to see. I do love Istrid actually. Recently yeah. read about Istrid actually in the short story. He is cool, mate. I'm not going to lie. I, <laughs> he is very cool. He's of course in He's the Witcher cool series sure. as well. So I loved him in that. I thought it was great. Yeah. <laughs> and, For uh, sure. I think this is a big moment, word. actually. Cam's finding a student off the rune word. This is just an extra student he's got access to, but also has a shield, so it's a little bit more difficult to remove. You're not just going to be able to use something like Professor on this but, uh, without removing the shield first. And now Cam's has to decide which cards to put in deck. Easter drawing really nice uh, finds for Cam's here as well. We can see those Siege Masters really helping Easter on his mission to really give Cam's everything he wants to hopefully be able to withstand this bleed that Nikwiz is going through with trying to squeeze out those provisions and those alumni payoff uh, potentially. And uh, also given Cam's kind of the time, you said, like you said, to develop uh, the, the alumni zeal. Yeah, and Kurt being used proactively um, for a bounty here. Of course, no defender for Cams, so it doesn't need to be using that Kurt as a purifier to remove the defender. And the bounty is really powerful. You're going to get a lot of coins as a result of that. Uh, this Fist Tech is going to clean up the Istrid, and you're also going to get six coins from the bounty. So um, it's going to be a little bit of an over-profit. And for Cams, he lost on even, so he really has no say in how long this round goes. So he did mulligan quite a lot of good cards uh, with his Istrid and is just trying to survive the round with the hand that he has. He's also going to be hoping to keep this chapter of Wizards um, order as well, because that's going to give him an another little bit extra for round three. But does have to be careful that Nequis doesn't just 2-0 here. 
yeah, I mean, then the Margarita lock here is coming in handy, locking that spender that you see on the board. And as we know, Nequiza's next spender is gonna show up from Savala potentially. So uh, really good locking that spender. is basically uh, just playing his cards, trying to squeeze out Kems' juice. And um, just like you said, Kems trying to be resourceful here, keep stuff for round three. And Nequiza sitting on that Savala in hand here syndicate of course does have a nice short round as well if they want to king of beggars well a huge point swing there yeah and we've had a question in chat like why is Nikwiz still playing here and it's because he has the luxury after winning on even to just try and trade efficiently um get as much carrier for round free and i also love this decision from cams just to hold the cedar charge he has to play the selt kirk um because that's all he has left but doesn't use the leader charge because it's just expecting the quiz not to play. And it's also just, I think the Istrid, it was so flexible. It got so much carry of like, look at this girl oh, with that extra point. The Shani with the extra point. Uh, okay, this guy doesn't, but you're probably going to mulligan him anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah. it, it also just allowed him to just really have the perfect hand to just not waste too <clears throat> many gold cards. Okay, he wasted the Selkirk. He actually decides to keep this, uh, this student, which is interesting here. Yep, we don't have a look at the... Okay, this explains it. Rafard's yeah. still there in deck of Royal Decree, then grabbing that out, and Kams is able to play it out with this little student that was kept here and nicely. Goes next to Rafard's, and Rafard's is actually doing something, pulling the winch. The winch is definitely a really, really good card as well now on something like Rafard's or Shawnee, and I think Kams is not uh, unhappy to see it. Yeah, Winch, in my opinion, well, the best bronze in the game. <laughs> That's what I like. Yeah. I, I think it it's so good, good right mate. I think it's insane. Obviously, better on um, onto the Vengeance, usually, but there's no bronze unit in hand. Can use it on Shani. I'm not sure if the cooldown's actually going to come through in time here. So maybe in this situation, it's not ideal. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, someone in chat has pointed out as well, there was the option here for Cams to use a leader charge on the student to get it out of the range of Professor. Of course, managed to save some leader charges as well. So that was definitely an option. Didn't go for it. That could have been a misplay from Cams though. Perhaps when you're playing ca uh, your cards really, really fast, there's a couple <laughs> of things that you can miss. Uh, definitely no fault Cams uh, for that. He definitely is in, in the flow. He wants to get this over with. <laughs> And so he's just jamming away. Nikwee's definitely keeping up with the pace as well. Very respectable, I think. Yeah, we see the practice makes perfect off Gerhardt into another alumni. Uh, with five damage, five boost, Ooh. has the zeal. Now these two leader charges aren't popping off too much. Also, the winch is looking really lackluster, unfortunately, with without Fair. that other bronze in, unit in hand. But we do still have the um, scenario there, or location, waiting, waiting for that to be triggered so under mage coming down nikwiz still at nine coins and as we know big big point swing still coming through cam's still getting that final zeal usage and goes for the perfect five points of damage there and now savala has to come down and make a lot of points if uh, nikwiz is going to take this game Yep, and does make use of the jackpot passive as well so isn't going to waste any coins but does still lose and this is the thing about alumni. Whew. People can remove your students. They can win on even, but you still win the game. It's kind of insane. To see what happens next. Yeah, and we've got off the books again from Cams against Nequiz and his Northern Realms. Uh, so, uh, of course, quite a similar matchup, but with different decks, different leader for Cams and for Nequiz. Does have a more safe... Um, Less greedy version with a defender with the necromancy. So he really is looking for his own life to be worth a few more points uh, in this one. He's That's going to be the key to his success, trying to get his Letitia and things like that to stick. And for Cams, well, I mean, look at the options he has as con for control. He has Philippa, Professor. He has a Sigi to get that bank nice and full and also has a Freakshire and, and a Morels as well. So similar options of control for Cams, which does mean it's going to be difficult, but there is no Kurt. And this is where the defender is probably going to shine. It is probably going to shine. And as we know, it can be tutored here with, um, ooh, we're going for the, the Letitia just right off the bat. The good thing about this is that there is no free, uh, horse and junior in Cam's uh, deck list at all. So you don't really have to worry about that, uh, six points of damage coming through. I mean, Cams could go ahead and utilize some leader charges here if he really wants to. 
Yeah, he does have access to some coins in the bank. So this Leticia is, is is sat there and it's quite tempting, I would imagine, for Cam's to, to deal with. And in fact, that is exactly yep. what he will do. Comes down here using a leader churches. This is another really nice thing about off the books is that you can afford to uh, really flexibly use those coins whenever. Now Freak Show is out, uh, which is a good card for an Equise to get out in, in round one. It's a big threat. Um, definitely for later. Are we still going to go for Defender and try to defend these little students? I mean, what is Nikwiz going to do here? Have a couple of options. You really want to stick those students, but with Freak Show on the board. Unless you lock it here with Margarita, which is stalling your students. Yeah. Then, uh, yeah, you're going to have to deal with that. Yeah, it's not an ideal start for Nikwiz at all here. Like, does decide to go for the Margarita, but as you say... This is just slowing down all of those patience cards by one turn, which of course is one point less for this round, but more importantly, that's one point less carryover as well. And also while Cam's, uh, while Nikwiz takes this lock, Cam's able to now just take this turn to play Siggy to fill that bank up, meaning that, okay, you can use this crystal skull, but you're very much now in the range of Philippa or Morelsi. Yeah. I love how you say Morelsi. Morelsi is Morelsi. I've never heard that before. I think I said Morelsi. both because I usually say Morelsi, but I've heard other people calling him Morels. So I tried to change, but then old habits. It's good. It's very unique. I like it. <laughs> All right. So here comes Kansas Saul, hoping to gather some points there. Uh, let's see if, uh, you know, you can deal with that with Seltkirk, but again, you're stalling your patience engines. You'd rather potentially get your cards down, get your melee student down when your Nikwi's here, but no, does decide to go ahead, take the Seltkirk, not letting that go any further. And I think that's pretty nice for Kems that, you know, Nikwi's is still stalling these um, students. And here comes the Philippa that you mentioned. Really, really, really good Philippa for Kems. Yeah, and, and Quiz just forced to pass, and it's not like he hasn't really committed much. He's committed his Selkirk, his Margarita, two of his like big cards that aren't relying on the carryover, but he also didn't really develop any carryover. He has no students really in the graveyard they can call back uh, with this necromancy. This is a really, really bad round for Nikwiz, and I, I wonder looking back if he was just supposed to Crystal Skull this, um, this Leticia, really. Um, because yeah. there wasn't a clean answer if he did that. And it does seem... I, I guess maybe you could have seen leader charges Morelsi. Maybe that's what he was scared of. So maybe that just wasn't a perfect way for him to play this. No, there's really... You could also argue that Nikwiz was supposed to take the, the defender there. But he couldn't have known that that Cams didn't have access to the Knut. Uh, sorry, Kurt. <laughs> in round uh, one for the Purify. So the defender would have really protected uh, Letitia really nicely. But... Uh, if you go for that, there's a there's a Kurt in there. You're kind of also stalling your patience engine. So it's a it's a really it's a bit of a pickle for Nikwiz in general for NR to really make things stick uh, into the city game matchup. Both players making use of the carryover from locations in round two. Of course, if these orders are not clicked, they'll be available for round three. And yeah, Mushy Truffle is a card that you don't see that often in Syndicate. It does, of course. Uh, break devotion so you can't play Horson. But this is where it really does shine when you can just play it in round two. Um, not only get the carryover of the truffle click from round three, but also the three coins that the beggar offers can contribute to a coin carryover as well. And here it comes Nikwiz. Now we see a patience engine and it's starting to grow, but it is in within professor range as well. So it's a little bit scary. Um, that would come down and destroy Nikwiz's plan to keep these on growing for those alumni we'll yeah see. and we've got another situation which is a bit of a theme of the day so far of uh one player winning round one on even and this just gives them such luxury to try and make some efficient trades you can control the length of round three as well so with a card like Savola plus King of Beggars, that's a lot of points concentrated into a short round. You wouldn't be too surprised to see Cams play on a little bit. But we're also really seeing the weakness of off the books compared to Jackpot, which is you don't have that luxury here for Cams of just playing a beggar um, and it it's profit turning into points. So he might have to roll the grief for a spender here. Um, does only really have bronzes in the deck, I guess. So it's not the end of the world. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's the one key difference between off the books and jackpot. We also saw though the benefit of off the books where he was able to commit two leader charges in jackpot. You That's your whole leader gone apart from the passive, whereas he's still got uh, four coins left for round three. Yeah, definitely uh, 
pros and cons for both of these syndicate leaders. But yeah, now you can go for that professor on one of these uh, students if you want to. Maybe you can deny the seal. Not exactly sure what the patience right now is. Should be about two or three on the melee student and maybe two right now on the, the ranged row one. So we've got Payabol in the chat, Celie, who's just said that, yeah, this off the books leader can give you some flexibility in on red in round one. You can just like yeah. um, use leader charges. And that's exactly what we saw Cams utilize here as well. Definitely not bad. Plus it does give you those three extra provisions as well as the yeah. tribute buff. Uh, yeah, so and these, these King of Beggars decks have slowly just been including more tribute cards as well um, since they've been reworking and changing the cards. So it does, you know, you already are playing some tribute cards, so you get some more value off the passive. And look at this 16-point Jackal again. The beauty of open deck lists means you don't have to be scared of something like an worry. artifact compression. Of course, if we were to see Gerhardt floated, that could be a possibility, but Camps does also have a clean answer. Morelsi, exactly. Morelsi could potentially wait for the greeted Gerhardt. We'll see if Nikwis does get the opportunity to do so. Here comes the Rafards now thinning the deck a little bit. We also see a Necromancy, but I'm not sure what kind of targets it does have. Potentially, I guess it gets uh, another student can continue taking towards the zeal on alumni, but it is a bit of a slow play for Nikwis. Maybe yeah. Eastred can come in and fix the draws. Yeah, and look at that, just drawing the Siege Master as well. Usually that could be a really, really good thing. Um, but unfortunately in this situation, no Siege Engines handy, having already played a couple this round. Um, does shuffle away, but the vitality of the Siege Tower does mean that he is still ahead. And for Cams, he's still got a couple of Bronze cards left. So he's going to continue, you would imagine, to just try and make some efficient trades. And in fact, does decide to take the Morelsi even. Um, really interesting there. Does, of course, still have access to King of Beggars, Savola round three. And again, I keep saying the shorter the round, the bigger impact that that has. We saw it with Melusine as well. These games kind of playing out quite similar when when winning on even, really. It's quite quite interesting to see. I've not really seen games of Gwent be like this um, in, in the months previous. You see winning on even quite like occasionally, but not as often as we've seen today. Yeah, I think alumni kind of requires that. You need that control. You need to suck out the power in round two. At least you need to try at the very least. Um, so yeah, it's definitely, I think, a matchup in which people are pretty confident just playing their their points early on because it does disrupt some of that carryover. Now Nikwiz, uh still developing these patience engines. Maybe wants to save uh, the chapter of wizards here. We'll see. He does need to make up a few points. Yeah, it's an interesting pass, isn't it? Because, you know, he does have these two bronzes in hand, but equally he is ahead at this moment in time. So maybe that's just why he decided to take that pass. Um, does just force that extra card from the quiz, which does now mean he did manage to get card advantage. So really making nice use of this bleed in round two. Still has the Mushy Truffle carryover. Didn't force out the chapter, but also the longer he said in this round two, the more patience carryover was going to be developed by Cam's, um, by Nequiz, I yeah. beg your pardon. by Nequiz. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, and just the truffle choice here for Cam's also really shows that it's it's really nice. And like, not only do you have an amazing short run with your Savala King of Beggars, but you also have this carryover from the truffle, which it's, it's a lot of points for Cam's in a short run. It's going to be really yes. satisfactory to see uh i think syndicate pulling those points on the board i mean sometimes you love it sometimes you hate it depending on what side of the board you are um but of course alumni should not be discounted they still have some some points for an acquies um here in round three and this is again sort of the power of the alumni decks that in round one it went terribly but that happened in the last one we watched as well and northern realms was still able to come out on top because you end up committing so many golds to answer all these carryover threats. But for Cams, he does have the Kurt. He has the Renegade Mage. And he also has this Salamandra Mage, which can clean up the Shani, preventing her uh, being a threat moving forwards, if that is what he decides to go for. Um, was able to also try and go Kurt offensively to get some bounty. But of course, it would only be on the Shani. Uh, does just take the Purifier, which just gives him flexibility. Doesn't have a great hand, but this is a result of um having to commit so many golds in round one but does have card advantage that's not something we saw i'm really excited to see how this one plays out also this is gonna be very interesting, yes. 
two siege masters in the deck for Nequiz just means he hasn't really optimized all the points from his deck at, at various points. You know, it could have gone a little bit better for him at times in this game. Yeah, and I think Nikwi's doing a good job here playing around Camps' uh, Salamandra Mage here as well, really trying to negate as many points as he can, but not for much longer. He has to kind of take it here, and that Salamandra Mage will potentially get its full value unless it decides to go for the Shawnee. Um, that potentially... That, it's not going to get winched, I believe. We saw Nikwi's only winch come down there in round two, so Camps can just go for the full value Salamandra Mage. Yeah, and the quiz has option off Gerhardt to float looking for casting contests, but also could just decide to go for the practice makes perfect. It's a safer option, and at times it can even be worth more points. Um, does go for the practice makes perfect. Doesn't find the second alumni, though. Does find the student, which isn't going to be ideal for him at all here. I guess the One positive more. of that does mean that he's, I think, guaranteed the alumni on this second practice makes perfect, however. We'll see. But yeah, there's definitely still a, an impressive amount of points on the board from uh, alumni here. Even just like you said, Nikwis didn't have the optimal game, but these boosts have definitely still piled up. And here, just like you said, comes the last alumni, all the points on the board. And then the moment of truth will be... <laughs> there's so many points! We Where need the this? Uma into Igni! <laughs> Where's the Igni? <laughs> yeah. Good, goodness gracious, I, uh, it's just insane how we can just spit out these points. And uh, I was going to say, it's going to be really satisfactory seeing the points that Syndicate can spit out in a, in a short round, which I mean, sure it can, but the point gap is very impressive right now. Here does come Savola into King of Beggars. We've got the Mushy Truffle Click, the Sea Jackal Horde, but it's just not even close to being enough. That is pretty incredible. Ooh. That is just alumni is just showing how much power there is. Things didn't even go optimally here for Nikwiz, but wow. <laughs> and remember, the loser of this game, we will perhaps be seeing, well, we will be seeing later on, I think, in the, in the loser's final um, to try and book their place there as well. So it's a battle of the syndicate. Off the Battle books of the syndicates. versus This is going to be exciting. We, here is where we really get to see like who... I don't even know who's like favored here. I think a lot will come down to draws as, you know, syndicate mirrors usually do. Maybe Camps does have just a bit of an edge. He has like a Sol potentially that will trade, uh, like Reels will have to go and tribute it. This is very, very interesting, but it, it's going to be like... Both of these players could totally make it here. It's going to be very, very close. Syndicate mirrors are, yeah, usually quite draw dependent. Yeah, and just sticking with the theme of the day as well. Both players playing very quickly so far. We know that we know that's how like uh, how Cam's likes to play. Nikwiz sort of just happy as well to just slam this tax collector, develop a bit of an engine. And for for Cam's, it is going to be a little bit awkward with the Tiger's Eye um, because he. You know, doesn't have that passive ability of jackpot. Might be worried about over-profiting. Is going to want to look to be getting as much carryover as possible as well. Yeah, absolutely. Looking at these little differences in the decks here. And I think in terms of consistency, Cams has that decree that can definitely come in handy. While, you know, Bank, uh, of course, is a little bit inconsistent at times. So we'll see if it will work uh, in Nikwiz's favor here in this game. It's, it's going to be a tight race. So far, we see pretty playable hands from both both players here. Yeah, so for Nikwiz, he's managed to develop a couple of engines. The Tax Collector, uh, which he kept alive with a Shakedown, and now this Passive Flora Peach. They're both ticking for points per turn. So the longer this round goes on for Cams, really, the more points that he is pretty much... Uh, getting caught up by by these engines which are playing close to one point per turn he also decided not to click his tiger's eye straight away so it does have somewhat of an over profiting issue um does click it does get his boat out um and now might be looking to pass because these engines are just creeping up from the quiz the longer the round goes on yeah definitely not looking too bad here both players can get away with playing kind of uncommittally here and now we have the poison as well threatening this jackal so either you do go ahead and play this curd here or you take the pass but curd it is camps is still looking to stay in the game as long as he can it's definitely not a, a bad point gap that camps has established by now really interesting as well this poison because there isn't actually a follow-up poison there in the hand of Nequiz. of course could have banked to try and find a trafficker or a fist tech 
but actually it was almost a bit of a bait and just getting that Kurt to be played as a purifier in this matchup is not ideal really I mean it can be okay but Kurt is a really good card you know like being able to use it as a, a bounty and then it just gives you more damage on something like a freak show uh, but does take the round with the Kurt being played um, doesn't have the maximum carryover here cams interestingly as well he's also at four cards so isn't going to have that option now to just go uh, mushy truffle get that beggar carryover get that uh, six points of carryover as well from the um what's the card called the froth doesn't yes. have that option so i feel Ayo. like yeah froth. Froth. i think it's froth. froth yeah i think the quiz did a really good job here because he's got more carryover also just has uh more opportunities to develop carryover on a dry pass and for cams he's not exactly got the world's best proactive hand and is forced to pass just one yeah. coin carryover for cams Definitely. Whereas, it's going to be interesting to see as well with Kamza's uh, Spender there coming out in round one. The Jackal. Can Nequise potentially control the Spender situation for Kams? We talked about that being a little bit tricky potentially for off the books. Uh, relying on those spenders a little bit more than Jackpot needs to. And Jackpot, of course, does have a little bit more control. While Kams, on the other hand, maybe has a little bit more uh, points and engine value with this truffle carryover. That unfortunately was not set up for this round three, but we'll see how it goes. Can you please control those spenders for cams? Oh, it's it's looking pretty even in terms of the draws here, but we did see back into Siggy. Yeah, and Siggy was the very bottom card here, Seely, yeah. which is not what you want to see. And that's a downside of bank, obviously, compared to Royal Decree that you actually ended up you know, spending some coins there uh, to find the Siggy. Um, whereas, obviously, if it was on the top, you would have had three coins extra compared to Royal Decree. Um, sea Jackal, also in hand for the quiz, probably would have liked to have mulligan this, but was running the risk of hitting King of Beggars if he was to do that. So, I had to keep the hand. Um, and Cam's here. Going second, he can just sort of utilize his bank. Uh, be a little bit awkward. Here comes the Kurt. Um, and that, that is the only uh, poison for Cam's. He only has one more. So, the Kurt playing for a lot of points here. The Kurt, this Kurt, on the other hand, is actually doing something with this Purify. And uh, yeah, I think we got a peek at Kamza's deck there as well. I think the Decree is looking to go for a Freak Show, uh, potential Freak Show, and uh, King of Beggars, Beggars the left in, in the deck. But other than that, I think Kams has kind of drawn all the tools that he needs. And uh, yeah, very, very tight race here. So Philippa coming down on that Spender, definitely not too bad. Yeah, Philippa being one of the most efficient ways of spending coins because for every coin you spend, you get two points, but also you're able to steal your opponent's card. So if it's an engine, their points turn to your points. In the case of the Jackal, it's just an efficient spender as well. Of course, if you can get that hoard value you're spending, uh, just getting some pretty decent value on those coins. Often you might want to see like Philippa being used on Freak Show or something like that, um, but Cams decides not to go for that. He will also maybe have the option here, Cams, of trying to go Professor Tribute on Freak Show to just get rid of that armor and remove it. But of course, Jackpot, also the passive, able to get this Freak Show up to six points or something like that. All right, Salamander Mage is coming down here from Nikwiz. Yeah, no Tribute Without, on there. Um, target so no tribute just kind of playing it out keeping these control tools in hand to then potentially answer threats later now i wonder is cam's going to utilize the sea jackal to his own advantage here uh the spender situation not amazing for cams um at least in hand you can't shoot her out that freak show which will help yeah and this poison as well not looking too hot um, maybe there's a possibility to Rod Decree for a Fist Tech Trafficker if he's found all of his cards. Um, I'm not 100% sure on what is remaining in the deck. Uh, but right now, for Cams, he does just want to try and get his coin count up a little bit. Siggy is playing for a lot less points, though, in a deck like this. Um, does just decide to actually take the Professor on the cut. Obviously, not able to finish that up straight away, but that is going to be worth more points uh, once it's killed. Six profit compared to just the four profit if you were to go for something like a Morels or whatever it might be. Um, so combining this with the Salamandra Mage to get even more value off the Professor. Yep, Kurt's gone and Kurt can't purify his own bounty. So there he is just waiting for points. I mean, this would be a really nice uh, freak show. Just go tutor that out and instantly hit the bounty from the Kurt and get six points in the bank. Not bad at all. But now it's Nikwiz's turn and he's going for the Professor. Kind of doing the same thing, setting up a really nice bounty that can't be purified at this point. 
Yeah, it's cool to see Professor being used like this. I have to confess, whenever I use Professor, I just kill a four strength unit, but <laughs> it, it definitely does make sense to just get eke those extra points out. And that's what really separates some of the best players from your average Joes. And um, combining the Salamandra Mage, this Salamandra Mage CD, when it was printed maybe like a year ago, I looked, uh -huh. everyone looked at this card and said, this card is insane. And for, it's just never creeped in to any Syndicate decks. But with the synergy it has with King of Beggars, you're obviously incentivized to play other tribute cards like Savola as well. Uh, it's finally got its stage and you can see the synergy it has as well with this King of, uh, with the Kurt and the Bounty, Professor, all these kinds of things. So really cool card to be, see, uh, to see, be seeing in Syndicate now. <laughs> yeah, and then we go with a perfect Salamander Mage. Like you said, coming down there, getting that bounty, getting to nine coins, and the ship is out. Now it's time uh, for Freak Show to come down there. It gets a little bit of value on the deploy ability. Can sit there and wait. No, I need to rush potentially here for Nequeezy. He can save his coins, decide does he want to fill up with something? Does he want to hold on to this? Take the Freak Show right away. Get the the coin count out by killing the bounty unit a lot of options but can just hold on to it for now yeah decides to kill the beggar as well though just in case there is that bonded beggar potential you've got to respect the beggars so i think it's worth <laughs> spending the three coins just in case there and cams now does have this uh sea jackal which in quiz kindly donated to philip or our heart um which was a really nice pickup by the looks of it because he would have over profited with this freak show had he not had a spender on the board and was able to utilize the jackal's horde as well so despite you know not having that passive of jackpot cams he doesn't need that passive of jackpot to play efficiently with his coins he knows what he's doing yeah there definitely isn't the risk of not having enough spenders because that philippa taking one of nequeez's and making it cams as nequeez not going ahead and philippaing it back either uh saying that maybe there's no need for that spender since i already have the jackpot ability and uh, the freak show in hand but then again cams did use that to his own advantage and here comes the freak show down takes care of the other freak show <laughs> and of course cam still has king of beggars left in deck and then sea jackal so no problem don't want to put that too tall though of course it does play into Muriel's or morelsi <laughs> yeah, and it's a really tight game at the moment, but Cams is still ahead and does have a card extra to play. The problem really for him is this card is not worth a lot of points that he's got, you know, extra. It is just a fist tech. And Siggy as well, bear in mind, is not going to be able to over profit. He is going to ideally be played when Cams has an empty bank. So it's going to be interesting to see how he uses his bank here to maximize the amount of points he can get. He could also try and truffle his professor up to make it more difficult to remove. Because um, that's the other thing that's on the board that, you know, there's six points from the mushy truffle in Kamz's favor, but there's also a bounty on his side of the board, which is six coins for the quiz. So it's closer than it maybe looks this one at the moment. I think it's going to be a tight game. Yeah, that's right. And here comes some of those leader charges being used on Muriel's here. All right. Leader Jack ability Paul coming through. Ability. And there's three golds in hand here, but they're all spenders, you know. Savola's going to spend, Philippa's going to spend, um, but of course, King of Beggars giving back a lot of those cards. And King of Beggars is going to be a spender that flies out onto the board as well to clean up every one, last one of those coins as well. Were there enough tributes for King of Beggars still to come out there for Nikwees? He didn't use that Salamandra Mage tribute. And here comes Kansas power play. Savala on both sides of the board now. Can't just hold on to that beggar. You can boost it a little bit. And the bank is empty. This is how Kams did it. He did empty the bank and now is able to play that Siggy to put the coin count back up. Wow, and this bounty on the Professor ends up just being wasted because Cams used the Morelsi to clean up that Freak Show and there wasn't an efficient way for Nequiz to deal with that. Um, he didn't want to use the Morelsi and not Tribute or, or Tribute to just kill a two with the King of Beggars. Here does come Philippa spending six coins to steal Savola, two coins spent with King of Beggars, but it's not the finisher you want if you're Cams. Wow. Can the Truffle but get him there? A lot of points still. This Jackal is going up to 26 points. And that is perfectly enough. That was such a... That, that Jackal was a really good steal for Cam's here. 
Yeah, Cam's wow. makes it through off the books is the new king of Syndicate, if, if this game's <laughs> anything to go by. It's official, yeah. 